Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all, I am back with the second video, which is the second part to the last video that I released concerning a dream. Um, if you did not watch it, go ahead and watch it um, because I re I'm not going to repeat it. I, you will hear bits and parts of the actual dream, but this is what the Lord is saying um, concerning the dream um, and the sound and the vision that I had concerning the this what I'm coming with you guys um on first and foremost I want to say thank y'all for tuning in with me um welcome back welcome back welcome back if you're new welcome welcome to my um ministry the ministry that God has given me the ministry that God is still birthing and is outflowing with his presence, um, the gift of God, the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I just got to give honor to God. Oof, y'all. I just came out of worship, and God is just so good. Like, God's mercy is just, can't nobody trump God. Can't nobody trump God, even in God's justice, even in his righteous judgment, even in his judgment, he's still righteous. Like, God is amazing. So we just want to honor God right now for being the God that he is, the God of mercy, the God of grace, the God of favor, the God of love, the God of kindness, the God of gentleness, the God of respect. The God of faithfulness, the God of the beginning and the end. And with God, everything is, it always begins. There is nothing that ends with him unless it's a closed door that God has shut. But even with closed doors, God said, no man can open. Any door that I open, no man can shut. So God keeps beginning with us. It's a blessing to be in the in his stead it's a blessing to be called his child it's a blessing y'all and god i just want to say god that if there's anything in me that's unpure unholy god unrighteous god god anything god that's unclean father remove it right now god as i go before you god as i go before your throne god with this word god god as you send this word out to the four corners of the earth lord god god i ask god god that you remove every unclean thing father god i give you room god god i make room god god for whatever it is god that you want to place on the inside of me god whatever it is god that you want to put there god in that space god that i've created god that i've made room for lord god god you do it god god let there be no voids god god let me found let me not found lacking not let me not found in want not let me not let me be found lord god in need god god void god in the name of jesus god god fill every void right now god fill me with your holy spirit lord as i I decrease you increase in the name of Jesus Christ as I decrease you increase uh, in the name of Jesus make no room for the enemy shape form or fashion uh, I see a beam of light a beacon of light I just see a light light God said he's ready to reveal himself he's re ready to show you his glory he's ready to show you ah uh, his true self to you he's ready to reveal himself to you mm. thank you oh god for being the god of glory king of glory fill this place king of glory fill this youtube channel king of glory Fill every subscriber, God, that is subscribed to this YouTube channel. Fill everyone that will come across this video in the name of Jesus Christ, God. And I thank you, Lord God. I thank you right now, God. I thank you, God, that I will go forth, God, and be your mouthpiece, God, and speak the oracles of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, and I do it with boldness, God. I do it with confidence, God. I do it, Lord God, standing firm on your word, God. Unmovable, God, always abounding in the work of, of the Lord, God. And I thank you right now, oh God, God, that your presence is here. I thank you, oh God, God, that you, that you met us right where we were, God. 
in the name of Jesus, God. And we thank you right now and we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that your will shall be done. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so, earlier on today, um, during my lunch break, I released the first video which is the video right before this video i released it and it was concerning a dream that i had along with the vision and, the, and a sound that i heard in my ear all of it went together but this is the second part because there was so much that god revealed to me as far as like revelation and scriptures to back up what he's saying in this season and particularly concerning that dream or whatever so i had to come back with the second part I didn't want to put all of that in one video because the video would have been like two hours long and you know how that go, you know. <clears throat> Some people get bored with the word. Some people get bored with you talking about God. So, you know, I'm coming with the, um, sec this is the second part. So, <clears throat> where I left off, I left off on the wind and the fire and I was talking about the lighthouse last. So, the wind... Um, the first verse that God gave me concerning this, the wind was Isaiah 29 and 6. It says, thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder, with thunder. Okay, I covered one of these. I covered this scripture in my last video, but I'll read it again. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise, with storm, tempest, and the flame of devouring fire. So basically, God is saying he is in all of that. <laughs> in this season, he is in all of that. Um, and it's time for us to get right. Because the contents that I seen in my dream, like, it just was not good at all. It wasn't, you know. For every bad, there is a good. But at the end of the day, we have to get through that bad. We have to weather the storm. And God is saying, I am in all of this, but you have to come to me direct. Come to the lighthouse. Come to the to the light direct. Straight up. <clears throat> so, in Jeremiah 4, I talked about um, how God was asking Israel, the nation of Israel, Judah, you know, he was asking them, hey, he was, God ain't got to beg us. But basically, he was showing them mercy, telling them, hey, come, come unto me. Excuse me, I got the hiccups for some reason. He was telling them to come unto me, repent of your sins and turn away from your sins and you will not be moved from me. I will keep you. You know, I will keep you in my state. I won't let no harm come near you. I will let no harm touch you. Like, you know, <clears throat> and that's what God is saying. The Lord is saying today, like, it's time for us to come into him. It's time for us to press into him like never before. It's time for us to throw away our idols. You know, all of our idols, whatever they may be. Throw them away. Throw them out. You know, I have some things I need to throw away. You know? Like for my love of food, I love food, but we all know that a lot of times when you don't treat food well, when you when you take advantage of good things, food is good. It don't treat you well, and a lot of times it could be you, like me. I, I don't eat in moderation. Like I can eat in moderation, but then I have times where I binge and then I have times where I binge and then binge on unhealthy things. And then it causes medical conditions. Like that's an idol that has caused me sickness in my life. God is saying it's a lot of things that we deal with that we put on our own self, or it's a lot of things that we deal with and we don't have to deal with. God said, lay, lay aside every weight that easily besets us. And that's what we have to do lay because they become weights they become weights so much to the point where we've dealt with it so long and it don't feel like a weight it feel like it's normal and that's not god is saying hey let go of all that stuff let let it go and come to me like come on i don't need y'all to be perfect but i i, I want to be able to look at the nation that I've raised up under my name and say that they are holy, to say that they are righteous, to say that they are of a priesthood that cannot be compared to no other nation. That's what God is saying. Like we are his. God don't want us to be compared to nobody else. 
We're not supposed to look like the world, sound like the world, think like the world, talk like the world, act like the world, walk like the world. God is saying that he's called us away from all of that. And when people look at us, they're supposed to know that we are a part of that priesthood, that richness is in our bloodline. A lot of us look just like the people from the other side. Hello from the other side. You feel me? God is saying, hey, come on. I love y'all too much. That's what God is saying. He really loves us, y'all. God loves us. Like, I don't know if y'all <clears throat> feel the love. I've always felt God love, but in this season, God is saying, feel the love. Like, feel me. Like, I am all around you. Like, I am in every, I am in your situations. You're not even paying attention. I am with you at night when you're crying. You're not paying attention. God is saying we need to turn our focus back on what's important. Like, it's a lot going on, but we need to turn our focus on God. Like, all this stuff that's going on is just a, it's just a distraction for real. It's become a distraction. And God is saying we're not supposed to be distracted by minor things that God has control over. If you know God has control over it, don't allow it to be a distraction. That's what I had to learn. Like I had to take literally take myself out of the equation like myself is not present. I had to take myself out of the equation and let God deal with it, whatever it was. And that's when I began to see God, the very essence of God. Um, I don't want to go too far left. Naom, I mean, Naom 1 and 3. Naom 1 and 3. What does it say? It says, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. So he's not going to let the wicked go for what they're doing. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. Y'all go back to the first video that I um, just released a few hours ago. God has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet the those stormy clouds those rainy clouds those dark clouds that loom and gloom over us god said though that is just like dust to his feet he shake that off god said he can shake that off just like that even quicker than we do that god can shake it off so that means we can shake it off too and know that the lord it's our horn of salvation. And, the, and to know that the Lord got us. <laughs> People be like trouble on every side. No, stop saying it. Stop saying it. Say, I have joy. I am rich because my father is rich. I am not broke. I am not poor. I am rich because everything that I need is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not sick. I am well. I am healed. Like, we have to start speaking that. The doctor have told me the conditions I have. I don't claim that. I may slip up and say it every now and then, but I don't make it a habit anymore to actually claim it. Because the longer you claim it, the longer you're going to be with it. The longer you claim whatever you claim it, negative or good, or good is the longer that you're going to have to deal with it. So I'm claiming healing in my season. I'm claiming being debt free in my season. I'm claiming and walking in the fullness of God in all of my seasons, period. I'm not even playing with the devil. The devil don't like me because I believe God. That's why. Because I follow God. I don't just believe in God. I believe him to the point where I follow the Lord. I follow. I am led by the Holy Spirit. Led, led. I don't play. I don't play with the devil. That's why the devil's so mad at us. Because we know that we have somebody. We have somebody that we can trust. Which is God. We have somebody that can trust us. God trusts us to do a thing. God trusts us to be his disciples. God trusts us to be his children. That's why he called us his. We have to know and trust God in the same way that he trusts us. Right? So, that means God is not slack when it comes to him um, and the wicked. Oh, he going to deal with them. Don't worry about him. He going to deal with them. He going to deal with the wicked. He going to deal with the wicked. He going to deal with it. 
He telling us right now we need to go ahead and deal with the things that we need to deal with in our life because what's coming, we need to be ready and prepared. We can't be out here looking like a fool. We call ourselves Christians and believers and looking like the fools of the world. We got to be prepared for what's coming, y'all. I'm telling y'all. Ephesians 4 and 14, it talks about doctrine. Ephesians 4 and 14, it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So number verse 14 is 10. We need to take heed to what we're listening to, what we're watching, what we're believing, what we're doing in this season, who we're following. Like for real. I don't listen to every preacher. I don't listen to every prophet. I, you know, it's good when you get a good quick word for somebody. But to follow them and listen to them and want to, and be ready and waiting and all the way, you know, because that leads to other things. Then you're going to be, next thing you know, you're going to be reading other stuff from other people, from other nations that don't even believe in the God that you believe in. So God is saying, don't be going to and fro here and there everywhere around these corners, slipping up under these cracks, opening other people's doors. Uh, no, uh-uh. God is saying, no, it's, it's not the time to be doing it. It's not the time. It's not the time. In, in my house, it's not the place to do that. When I hear, I hear, in my father's house, God said, in his house, we don't do that. We only go by the doctrine of the word, the, the holy word. The, the word that sets a fire and consumes us, that word. And we're going to get to that part next. Because let me tell you what the doctrines is. You know those when you go out, when you go outside, like I was saying in that last video, how I went outside and I seen nothing but big, huge, gigantic, dark waves, like, uh, like waves that you see in movies, like, <sighs> y'all. Those that those are the false doctrines. The storms and wavy waters, the chaos of the waters are the false doctrines. They are the multitude of sin. They are the multitude of the different nations. They have their own doctrine out there and they're trying to do everything that they can to deceive us from following the true doctrine, which is the sound doctrine, the sound word of God. If y'all don't believe me, y'all just get in y'all word and read. It's read. Read. I'm talking about read. James. Um, read all of them. Romans, Ephesians, Revelations, Proverbs, Psalms, Matthew. Read, 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 read. Because you have to be content in what God is saying in his word. You have to understand what God is saying in his word. If you don't understand what God is saying in his word, you're going to be easily persuaded. If you don't fully believe in God or fully believe in Jesus Christ, you will be easily persuaded. You will be deceived. So God is saying, get in my word and know the Lord for himself. So that when people present to you all this kind of stuff, you're going to know it's something ain't right about this. Let me go back to the word and see if this is in the word. Something ain't right. This don't look right. This don't sound right. This don't feel right. You're going to know. There's a knowing when it comes to the word of God, sound doctrine. When you see these people out here in this world, these wicked people, and they talking about this, that, and the third, and they doing this, that, and the third, and they calling it the new age, when it's just history repeating itself, idolatry, capitalize every letter in idolatry, that's what it is. Witchcraft, capitalize every letter in witchcraft. That is what it is. People don't want to want to. People don't want to believe that they're operating in witchcraft because they're calling up their dead ancestors. But it's witchcraft. When you dead, you dead, baby. You. When you dead, you're dead. You you don't have no more life when you dead. 
that time haven't even come. And for you to be talking back to dead people, something wrong. You need to check your connection. For real. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you know a friend that do that. You better let them know to go read Deuteronomy. Check your connection. That's necromancy. That's witchcraft. That's demonic and evil powers, evil forces. Witches you talking to. Demons you demons you talking to. Anyways. It says when Ephesians 14 and 14. It was a note. It says when gifted people equip the church. The community of faith will be evidence of stability in precept and in practice. So when we begin to live in sound doctrine. not You can't just believe sound doctrine. You just can't believe the word and not live it. You got to be a doer of the word. You can't just hear it and not live it, okay? So it's basically saying when people, when gifted people, children of God, when we are equipped, the church as a whole, the community of faith as a whole will show forth evidence. We as people, we as children of the day, children of light, children of God, we as people of the faith, will be evidence of stability. How? St stability is being stable. It's being established. It's being planted. Right? Of stability and precept and practice. Precept means a general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. So, that say saying that, that will be evidence of stability and in and, and our behavior and in the way we live, the way the, what we practice, because people say practice what you preach. So what we practice, what we talk about will be evidence in what we speak, what we believe will be evidence in what we live. What we talk and speak and believe will be evidence of the way we walk. It'll be evidence of our behavior, right? So Ecclesiastes 1 and 6, it reads, The wind goes towards the south and turns about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. So that's basically saying that the wind that I heard when I was asleep, it was like, it was a quick wind. I'm talking about a wind of judgment. It came in my ear so fast. And it's saying that same wind that came this way could go back that way and it swirl right back around to the to the place where it started from. And God is saying with that same wind, it came to take us out. See, God, one thing about it, that I know that God created everything. God created good and he created evil. So that same wind that came to take us out, just like those same murky, harsh waters in that same harsh windy violent wind came to take us out it ain't if we continue to come into the lord if we continue to trust god if we continue to do his will his way and put down our own thoughts for a while and really see what god is saying because that same wind that came our way came to blow us because of the god that we serve so it ain't just try to come and hit us. It tried to hit the God that we serve, but the God that we serve hold all the power in his hands. Do y'all understand me? So the God that we serve could tell the wind to go and it has to go. It could tell the wind to turn around six times in a circle like a tornado, like a tsunami, and it can, it will do that. But it will only hurt the ones who don't believe. Yeah, we may see hard times. Yeah, we may see circumstances. Yeah, you know. But it ain't going to kill us. It's not going to hurt us to a point where it's going to knock us down and we can't get back up. That's not the type of God we serve. It's just not. But we have to know the God that we serve. We have to believe the God that we serve. But if we're out here doing stuff that the world doing, 
We how we gonna be able to help the people out there if we doing the same thing they doing, or if we even we ain't even gotta be doing what they're doing. But if our mindset still holds a piece of the world, how can we go out and help somebody in the world? Because we can have some some connections that God connect us with just in the world to be to be helpers of them. And you gotta be careful. Who you are in God, and you got to know who you are in God. So that worldly stuff don't taint what's on the inside of you. I made a video, I believe it was last week or last week before last, when I said, be careful, don't let the enemy, anything that is not like God, taunt your gift, taint your gift, or smother your gift. Whatever your gift is. We have to be careful in this season, y'all. God ain't playing. God said we are his children. We, God said that we were created in the likeness and image of him. So that means we are a reflection of God. So guess, guess what? We got to look like God. We got to put on the mind of Christ. In the word it says, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. So the same mind that the Lord have, we need to put on that mind. No, we're not perfect, but God said he's calling us to be different than the people that's out there. To be holy, to be better than them. That's what God calling us to do and be. We got to get it together, right? Because God loves us. God, God is coming back for a church without spot and without blemish. Okay? So go ahead and iron your clothes and put your best clothes on and put your best foot forward. Put your best clothes on that you got and put your best foot forward. No, you don't have to have the richest pieces. No, that's not what it's about. Put your best foot forward with everything that you have on the inside of you. Let it shine outwardly. Let it shine. Um, we still talking about the wind, y'all. We still talking about the wind. So in verse 3 through 7, it says, and this is Ecclesiastic 1, verse 3 through 7. What prophet has a man of all his labor which he takes under the sun one generation pass away and another generation comes but the earth abideth forever the sun also arises and the sun goes down and hasteth to its place where he arose the wind goes towards the south and turns about unto the north it whirls around about continually and the wind returns again according to his circuits all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full unto the place from which the rivers come. There they return again. So everything that we see in is not going to trump us. Because guess what? The next generation going to see the same thing. It's nothing new under the sun. But while we are yet here, we need to be making a difference. Basically, that's what the scripture is saying. While we are here. Because we're not doing anything to make a difference. In the world... See, we've been called out of the world, but the Lord God sends us back to the world to make a difference. But don't nobody want to make a difference. People, it, it's people, I, and I say this because, and I say this humbly and respectfully, I say this because it's people that feels like they, they, they can't change the world. You can change uh, just a tiny piece of the world. If every believer in the body of Christ changed just one, one thing about the world and made it better, don't you know what that would do collectively? It starts right here in the mind. It starts here. It starts in the mind. If we can think a thing, do you know how powerful we would be? This is the same power that I spoke about two videos ago. The same authority, if we could think a thing, if we could believe a thing, then it could go from here to here, to our womb. 
then we'll be able to produce. Do y'all get where I'm going with this? I don't want to go too far left, so I'm going to keep going. Um, Joel 2 and 28 through 32, it says, one of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> we all should know these scriptures. Joel 2 and 28 through 32, it says, and, shall, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the hands made, in those days will I pour out my spirit. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The shun... The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the, upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord have called. Y'all. So God is saying that everybody not going to get his spirit. The only time, you're, only time you receive the Holy Spirit is when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ in salvation as your Savior, right? And then God is saying, this is the time. This is the time now. This is evidence of it. God is pouring out his Spirit. Everybody not going to get the pouring if they don't receive the Lord. This is where the fresh wind comes in at. When I talked about the wind that shot past my ear that night, the wind of judgment, God says, yes, I will send a wind of judgment upon my people and the, and the, and the uh, people of the world, the Gentile. I will send a wind of judgment. I will. I'm going to do that. God is doing it now. But what's to come is far greater than what we're seeing now. But it's, it's, it's coming. It's already here, but it's coming stronger, right? Because the wind I heard was strong and violent. God is saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to send my wind. Now. If I don't be God, then I'm not, I won't do that. But I'm God. So I'm going to send my wind. But God is saying, even when I send my wind of judgment, I will send a second wind. The wind is twofold and the fire is twofold. God said, I'm going to send a second wind, a refreshing wind, a fresh wind, a fresh anointing, my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God said, and when I send my fresh wind, this is what's going to happen. Because this happened in the early church, in the early days when the church first first was starting but God said I'm raising up a church that's going to know me that's going to follow me that's going to river me that's going to worship me that's going to call me their God that's the time, kind of church I'm raising up and when I send this second wind this refreshing wind to the ones who have answered the call to the ones who I have handpicked and chosen to the ones who don't mind coming into me and to my son not the wicked, not the ones that that's doing these profane things out here with these false doctrines, lying, the false prophets, and and the and the and they they calling these false sheep and they just following these false prophets. A lot of them lost and a lot of them know what's going on and they still following these false prophet prophets. God said if they don't repent and turn, they will see the harsh wind. Even us, the church. It's time for us to repent and turn too. But God said, I am sending a fresh wind. I am sending a fresh wind. I am sending a fresh wind that will purify, that will, refri that will refine, that will refresh the very soul of man, the very essence of man. A fresh wind. Ah, my God. Ah, God, my God, a fresh wind. And it talks about this in Acts chapter, chapter 2. How the day of Pentecost, they came and they was all on one accord. God said, when we get on one accord, that's when we will see the fresh wind. We all scattered. 
Our minds all in different various places. Our hearts are not with God. Our hearts are not with our brothers and sisters. We, we killing them and saying black lives matter. No, no it don't. Stop lying to yourself. Black lives don't matter until you do what you need to do to get it right. Not out here protesting all loud so people can know that you protesting. No. God said, let me matter. When I matter, that's when lives will matter. Because when we begin to put God first before our mothers and our fathers, when we begin to put God first before everything in our lives, that's when the lives will matter. That's when things will line up. Now God said, stop lying to yourself. And saying this and that matter and it just don't, it don't matter. You just saying it because it sound good and it feel good when it come out your mouth. This is not for everybody. This is for the wicked generation. They're talking about they want to see justice, but they serving the worldly system. They serving the beast. They don't even serve God. And talking about black lives matter. How can lives matter when you don't even serve the creator God? It's a lie. It's a facade. And God said, when we all come together on one accord, suddenly, suddenly there will be a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house. This wind, y'all, that I heard in my ear when I was asleep at night was a, it was a violent wind. It was like, whew. I'm talking about a wind, what I, it, get, it frightened me. But it still gave me rest. How can a wind be so scary but still give you rest? Hmm. I heard somebody just ask that in the spirit. How? How? Because God said that the first wind, the first side of that wind was windy and scary and violent for judgment that will fall upon the people of the world. But the wind that I'm going to send to refresh and renew you all that will fall upon you is my wind that comes from the heaven, comes from heaven. And it's going to be rushing and it's going to be a mighty wind and it's going to be a wind of power and it's going to fall upon you. And it's going to hit your household in a way that you never thought. Imagine in a way. Ah, my God. And it says, and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as a fire and it set upon each of them. That means God is ready to pour out his spirit. And it's only going to fall on those that are in one accord with the body, which is Christ's body. So if there's anybody in Christ's body that is holding the Lord's body hostage, you're going to feel a different kind of wind. It ain't going to be the kind of wind you want to feel either. And the tongues of fire, those are the prophets. The, the preachers and the teachers speak, speak in the sound doctrine of God. The tongues of fire. God says, if you will not fall into one accord of my son, of my body, because God is the head of the church. God is the head in Christ. Christ is right here. So God is the head of all of this. He's giving Christ the, the rulership and the authority. To be head over the body. So God is saying if anywhere in your life. In your mind, any aspect on any level of your life, if you are if you are holding Christ's body hostage, it's time to wake up, it's time to rise up, and it's time to turn the light on. I just seen a vision while I was talking. When you get up to start your day in the morning, you first got to sit up. It's time to sit up. It's time to get alert. It's time to move your legs off of that bed. Put your feet on solid ground. It's time for you to stand up. And it's time for you to go cut that light on. And it's time for you to really look in the mirror. Because you don't want to be found. You, want, you don't want to be caught found lacking.
weighing in the balance. Many, many tackle up harzen. That means you're found weighing in the balance. And what God does, he judges. In the book of Daniel, when that king was found weighing in the balance, he judged that king and he killed him. And he took his kingdom away from him. So you don't want to feel, see, feel the wind in the fire opposing to this in, in Acts 2 and 1 through 3. You don't want to feel the other side of the fire in the other side of the wind. You don't. And I digress. I wrote here, fresh wind, baptism of the Holy Spirit. This was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It took place. That empowered them to be witnesses. It empowered the disciples to be witnesses. So God is saying he's empowering us because he's about to send us out very soon. But we got to be ready. And if we ain't ready, guess what? <laughs> um, I, I made a note here. It says this happened 10 days after the Lord ascended into heaven. 10 days after he went up with, the, with God to meet him. And 10 is a number that represents completeness, perfection, and order. So God is saying only those who are ready, only those who crossed out and completed all the missions they were supposed to complete in the time frame that God had given them, the ones who did it in order, the ones who did it in decency, the ones who did it without complaining, the ones who did it without murmuring, the ones who did it without, you know, all of that. It, even if you fell short, God is saying there is still time. This is the time now. Number 10, it also represents testimony, law, and responsibility. So it's some things that we got to think about. It's going to be January 1 on tomorrow. And it's some things we got to think about. God is saying the promise is near, but I mean, should I let y'all go into the promise just yet? And y'all still are way back there when y'all supposed to be right here. Like it's time for us to get it together. So in Genesis, um, and one, it talks about how the spirit breathed, um, and blowed over the water. The, the, the chaos of the water, the face of the deep. In Genesis 1, it talks about how the Spirit of God hovered. When the Spirit of God hovers over something, he breathes over it. So even in Acts, God breathed on the people. This thing's so deep. So in Genesis 1, the face of the deep, the void, darkness, when God breathed over the face of the waters... God is a God of movement. So not only did God breathe over the face of water, but he moved over the face of water. And he did it all in just one breath. It did. It, it was just like... <laughs> Man, y'all, God is dope. He's just good like that. Right? In Genesis 2 and 7, it talks about how God blew into the life of man. He breathed life into the life of man. That's Ruach. We're talking about, when, we, when we're talking about breathing, we're talking about spirit. We're talking about the Ruach spirit. In, in Ezekiel 37, God breathed over the bones and gave them life again. And then he told the Israel, the nation of Israel to speak to the wind and tell the wind <laughs> to come back over here and do your job, wind. Come back and do your job when <laughs> y'all this thing's so deep. And you know, the dry bones empowered Israel to regain their strength. So that same wind that came and knocked them down, where they was dry and they was dead, had to be the same wind that had to come back and give them strength. Y'all just don't even understand. In Jeremiah 23, now we're going on to the fire. I told y'all, this, what God be giving me, it be full of meat. It be full of his word. Like, it, 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 God don't be playing. Jeremiah 23 and 25 through 29, it reads, 
I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. 28. <laughs> The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chafe to the wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? God's word is mighty and God's word does not lie. God's word is everything. And... It's crazy because last night when I sat down to write all of this down, because I had it all in my head and God is saying to me, you know, in this season, daughter, stop trying to retain everything in your head because that's where you go to overthinking. So God has been making me actually write down this, this, this stuff on paper because I was putting it in my phone and I got tired of doing it. Like, so recently, like a week ago, God had began to have me to put this stuff on paper, actually write all of this stuff down. It's a lot, right? So last night when I sat down because I said, okay, I got to get this out of the way because I know it's a lot that I have to write, but I still have to do this video because God gave me a timeline. When you led by the Holy Spirit, you have a timeline to do things. You not, you don't move on nobody else's time, but the Lord's. And some people have to, you know, really come into that, you know, it's not easy, but day and day, by and by, little by little, it becomes you, a part of you, right? So I was like, okay, I know I got to sit down and write this stuff because I know I got to do these videos before such and such a time. Like, I already knew that. So when I sat down, I began to second guess myself. Not second guess myself, but like, you could call it sec second guessing. I began to like, Lord... I, no, I asked God. Well, I was second guessing myself in my head, but when I began to sit down and actually write out my scriptures and stuff, I was like, Lord, lead me because I know this was a time of study. Because even though God had already given me the word, it was still I still needed to go back and read over this stuff, like because it was a whole lot. It's a lot of scriptures God gave me, right? So I was like, Lord, you have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. I decrease while you increase. Give me understanding, knowledge, revelation. Give me insight to what you are saying you know i don't want this to be my thoughts everything i just want it to be you god so that was my prayer and i cracked open my bible and i start writing out my scriptures and when i came across this this was one of the first scriptures i came across and i was like that's when i start second guessing myself i was like so lord you trying to tell me that all this stuff i've been doing is <laughs> is a lie and I sat back about y'all like this. I said, I'm just not going to believe that. I know I hear from God. Like, I know I hear from God. I know I hear from God. So the Lord was like, no, 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 no. He was like, continue to read, 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 read until you understand. So I read the three scriptures again. And I was like, okay. So basically God is saying, and this is how I got it. Basically God is saying, because I mean, the scripture, it pretty much speaks for itself. But God is saying, even in this time, there are prophets. It's called soothsaying in the Bible. Honey, honeycomb prophets. It's prophets that's speaking all these good things. And God says, yes, I do have promises that I've made to, to my nation, to my people. Promises, they have to come forth, you know, because my word will not come back to me void, you know. And promises are always good. There are always good stuff that comes out of the promises of God. So, and God was like, basically, it's a lot of prophets that's going on now. They're speaking all this good stuff, but they're not speaking judgment. They're not speaking repent and turn from your sin. They're not speaking the real things that I have called them to speak. They're skipping over those things. And he was like, daughter, you're not one one of those people he was like but you need to be aware and you still need you need to stay on track don't get you he was like i'm i'm gonna give you because i even got a word that i gotta come out with tomorrow or like the first week of january right and god was like and that word is like a 
a, a prophetic word, but it's a pr word of promise, right? And God was like, I give you good words all the time. He was like, but I also give you word of judgment and correction. And he was like, you speak it. He said, that's what, that's the way that I want all of my, not just my prophets, but my disciples. But he was like, my prophets, they're speaking lies in my name and they don't even call me God. They worship Baal. And I was like, yeah, God, you right. And he was like, even the ones that call me God, they are still soothsaying prophets. And they're going to be over there on Baal's side worshiping the devil because that's not me. I, my word is a word. My word is balanced. My word have good and it have bad. My word have correction and judgment and it has refining. It has promises. It has, you know, and that's basically what he was saying. And he was like, yeah, you have dreams. And he was like, continue to talk about your dreams. Continue to speak scripture. He was like, the, the things that you are doing, I've asked you to do. But the things that other prophets are doing, and it's not all of us that's doing this. But he's saying those fake prophets are prophets of Baal. they prophets of Baal. And we have to beware of the stuff that people putting out. Even me, like when God give me a word, I have to sit on that word. This dream that I had was four months ago, almost five months ago. I had this dream like in what, August, August, September, October, November, December. Yeah, this dream was like what, almost five months ago. I don't, you know, when it comes to the word of God, I don't play. And that's how we should be when it comes to God. Don't play in God's face. If we don't want nobody playing in our face, why would we want to play in God's face? Anyways, um, Isaiah 10 and 17, it says, and we're talking about fire because this has to do with the fire of God. Because even in Isaiah, um, even in Jeremiah 23 and 29, it says, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? I told y'all in the vision that I had in my sleep, God placed a Bible in front of me and the pages of the Bible on both sides were fire. And there was words coming up from the Bible. God was writing. And the words were coming to life. The words was coming up from the pages of the Bible. And it was nothing but fire and flames in the Bible. God said, is not my word like a fire? So the fire comes as a refining tool, a refining of uh, something that refines us. But he's saying that the fire that he's going to send upon the ones, the wicked generation and the, the unrepentant, the ones who think that this is a joke that's a whole different type of fire we don't want to feel that fire we want to feel the fire we want to be refined in god's fire he says and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces we want god to beat us <laughs> if god don't beat us then what does that mean he said in his word the ones i chastise i love but and we want to be burnt away because everything that is burnt off, it leaves room for things that will stay. If you think about a ring, if you think about precious metal and gold or whatever they call it, when they have to refine that stuff to see if it's real, they have to test it in the fire. And when they take it out the fire, that's when they look at it and examine it and know that if, if, if it's real or not. They know the type of quality that it is, right? That's the same way with us. We have to go through the fire and we, we come out all of the old things, all of the things that had to fall off of us will be gone off of us. Some things have to burn away and that's what God's saying. We, we, he got to burn some things away off of us. Um, I'm sorry, Isaiah 10 and 17, it says in the light of Israel shall be for a fire and his holy one for a flame and it shall burn and devour devour his thorns and his briars in one day and that's just saying we are the vineyard of god we are the vineyard of god we okay when you think about all his stuff that grows on the branch the trees and stuff and we the branch and we the um fruit and if the 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 the, the um 
if the branch don't bear no fruit, then we throw that fruit away. Is we throw the branch away. It's not bearing nothing, right? And God is saying, even in his vineyard, if there are thorns and briars, he's gonna turn that into fire. He's gonna light a fire, ignite it, and it's gonna be burnt off. Because he don't need it. And it further goes into detail in um in Isaiah 5 and 1 through 7 as well. So let me go to Isaiah 5 real quick. In Isaiah 5, 1 through 7, this is the detail of Isaiah 10 and 17. Um, it says, Now will I sing to my beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. This is talking about the Lord. My well-beloved has a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it. Mm. That made me think about the lighthouse. And also made a wine press therein. And look that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. So God did all of this to his vineyard. <laughs> and when the grapes finally grew on this vine, he thought it was going to bring good grapes, grapes that he can make some good wine from. Grapes that was going to be pressed and beaten and trampled upon and that he can pour into a nice old good, beautiful glass and it'd be looking good. And he thought he was going to sip some good wine. God looked at them grapes and said, I can't do nothing with these grapes. They wild grapes. They poison. They ain't no good. Right? In verse 3, it says, And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? God said, All this that I've done with my children, because we are the vineyard. We are inhabitants of the vineyard. God is saying, what, what more could I have done? What more could I have done with my children? Well, I've done everything that I could possibly do. I'm God. There is nothing I cannot do. What could I have possibly done? And it says, wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do with my vineyard. I will take away the hedge and it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof and it shall be trodden down. God said, if we keep playing with him, he's going to take away the hedge of protection. And the very thing that he built the wall around us, he's going to tear that wall down. And the, the very thing that was, that was like shut out to not eat us up, he's going to allow. Because he's been sowing and planting in us and we have not grown the way that we're supposed to be grown and he can't even reap nothing from us he can't even reap his harvest because there is no harvest that's a shame <laughs> listen what i tell you this stuff i be like lord i repent now lord i'm sorry hebrews 12 it says hold on isaiah 29 and 6 what isaiah 29 and 6 say That was one of my, my good scriptures. I remember that number. Isaiah 29 and 6. Oh, I already read that. Sorry, y'all. Hebrews 12 and 29, I believe. 12 and 28 through 29, it reads. Wherefore are we giving, wherefore are we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved? Let us have grace whereby we may serve God, accept the acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our god is a consuming fire here's that fire again that good old fire our god is a consuming fire so when we serve him we need to serve him and worship him with the godly fear and trembling not saying oh i'm scared of god no we need to serve him and submit ourselves humbly before him we need to create a heart posture of servitude or servanthood, which may be the correct word, to God. 
to the Lord Jesus Christ, to God. We have to create our heart posture. It first starts up here. When we get the thoughts of who God is and we, we look over our lives, in our heart, we need to create a heart posture that, okay, I'm going to serve God. Because God has given us much grace so that we will serve him. Because he is a consuming fire. He is a consuming fire. He is. I've seen, I've seen it. I've seen it. God has showed up in my life physically, literally as a consuming fire. When I was a little girl, I don't know if I did a video on this or not. But when I was a little girl, every night, every night I used to go to our bathroom. And I used to bend down in front of, you know, like the bathroom cabinets where you have to literally like bend down like or like lean over to open the cabinet to get what you want out of it. I used to literally bend down as a little girl, open both of the cabinets. This happened every night, like at like in the middle of the night, like when everybody was asleep. I used to go in the bathroom. No lie, y'all. I, 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 oh, God, my God. Hi, yeah, what do you see, y'all? Jesus. Y'all, I would tell y'all no lie. I used to go in the bathroom every night. It was like in the middle of the night. Everybody would be asleep. I used to be like six, seven, eight years old. I remember it like it was yesterday. Everybody used to be asleep. It used to be pitch dark in the house. And I used to go in the bathroom every night. And like um, stoop down. Open both of the bathroom cabinets underneath the sink and fire i used to just watch the fire it used to be like a fire a flame of fire kindle like a kindle of fire every night it wasn't until i was about probably in my early 20s when i realized what that was but it wasn't until i was about 30 years old when god really began to speak to me about that thing it was amazing to me. And every now and then, God would take me back. God would take me back as a reminder of who he is. And I would just think about my life and how God has brought me from and to. Brought me from here to there. Taking me from here to there. Like, no lie. Like, it's amazing. 1 Corinthians 3 and 13, it reads, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So everything that we do under the sun, excuse me, everything that we do in this life is being tried and is being recorded and is being burnt and is being saved. Whatever it is, and everything that we do is going to speak for itself unto God. And that people may see it too. People are going to see it, but it's for the glory of God. And it says, if any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. What is the reward? I talked about it in the last video. The reward is the light of life. The reward is the light of God, the reward is salvation. When you can be saved in every area of your life, when you can be saved in every category of your life, when you can be saved in every aspect of your, of your life, if you could be happy all in every aspect of your life, that is a great reward that comes from God. Bump having a million dollars, God can give you that. Yes, he can. But the riches in the Lord Jesus Christ is what I aim for. Is what we should be aiming for as believers. So if you could be happy in this area of your life and not so happy, God is saying he's looking to bring balance to everything in your life across the board, in every aspect, in every category. Salvation. Salvation is real. God saying he don't want us to be saved in one area and not the other area. That won't be no type of reward. What kind of reward is that? We have to accept, accept salvation as a whole in our life. 
and let it flood our lives, the very aspect of our lives. I'm working towards that. I'm working towards being saved in every area of my life. God knows it. I'm not bragging and boasting. I'm being transparent. I'm being honest. I'm being real. And I'm being 100. Even the way that I speak. I know God going to deliver me. God going to make me, make, make me speak great. Because I am a child of greatness. God is going to change my speech. God is going to change the way I talk. Because I'm giving it to God. Each and every day I get in his word, I'm giving it to God. Each and every day that I make a video, I'm giving it my all to God. When I go before the throne and I'm praying on the behalf of the nation, I'm giving it all to God. God is going to refine me. That's what the fire is for. That's what it's for. Um... Isaiah 66. I ain't write that one down. Well, I wrote it down, but I didn't put it in here. So Isaiah 66 and 1, it says, Thus says the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you would build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? God is saying... Yeah, it's good that we can go in the church building and worship him, worship him because that's where the spirit of the Lord is. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in, in truth, right? But God is saying, if he is the God of heaven, and if earth is his footstool, where is the house that we will build him personally? Will we build him a house on the inside of us where he should be dwelling? Will we make his place of rest on the inside of us? That's what God is saying. Where will we, what, 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 where? I believe he told that to King Solomon because King Solomon really, really wanted to build God a beautiful and glorious temple. I believe he ended up getting it done. But at the time, God wanted it done, Right? God said, in this season, build a place of rest for me on the inside of you. Let's start on the inside of you. Let me start working on the inside of you, right? Um, Isaiah 66 and 14 through 16, it says, And when you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants and his indignation towards his enemy. So that other wind I was talking about, the harsh wind and the wind of correction and the wind of judgment and the wind of destruction. I mean, in the fire of the fire of destruction and the fire of judgment, God is saying, we're we'll, we going to see that. But we're not going to see it the way that the Gentiles going to see it. We're not going to see it the way that um, our enemies will see it. Because God's enemies are our enemies. Our enemies are God's enemies. Right? We're not going to see it the way that they're going to see it. We're, we're going to see it, but the way that we'll have to endure it will be far greater. You know, because we know that God will be on our side. He's saying that the indignation that he will put towards his enemies, the wicked... And the Gentiles who don't turn and the believers who don't turn, they're going to see that anger. In verse um, 15, it says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire mm, and his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Y'all, I'm not making none of this stuff up. It's all in the word. And then for me to have a vision with God opening up his word to me with flyer, fire coming off the pages and he's writing judge and judgment. He's actually writing this. I can see the words coming up off the page and I can see the fire coming. I didn't say God was coming in fire. His word said it. I didn't say when either because God has not revealed that to me. But it's coming. I'm not saying we all going to be burnt up. I'm not saying we're going to see fire everywhere. We're just going to be on fire. I'm not saying that. I'm saying get in your word and see for yourself. That's what I'm saying. 
because fire's been coming. I've been seeing it on Facebook when pe people talk about wildfires in California, wildfires here and there. But what if God was speaking of a whole nother fire? What if God said, yeah, that's the fire I sent, but what if I'm sending a whole nother fire? Verse 16, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. That's a mic drop. Moving on to the next scripture. That's a whole mic drop. Um, and I'm done, y'all. Joel 2, 28 and 32. Let me reiterate that because I wrote it a second time. Um, it's called upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Oh, I forgot to go through the lighthouse. Okay, 1 Corinthians 3 and 13 through 15. Let me go back there because it speaks... It, it, it speak about something that I want to touch base on that I, I only talked about your works and your works being purified by the fire or whatever. But I wanted to talk about the end result being the reward, the reward, the end result being that God will bring you into the house of light. Even after that, even after you've been tried, like God is still ushering you into the house of light, the light where you would, the, the house where you would dwell with the Lord, you know, the house where it would be your horn of salvation. I said in the last video, in the last video, in, in the um dream, the lighthouse represented the horn of salvation. It represented the high tower in Psalms 18. And it's just a beautiful way that God speaks to me, that he gives me these dreams. And then he sends me to the word of God and shows me deeper revelation and shows me that his word stands. His word is first. His word is first, y'all. Yeah, God give me these dreams, but his word is first. God always takes me back to his word. And that's what God is saying. My word is still a reward. It don't matter what you see. It don't matter what the wicked in the other nations do to try to rise up against you. It don't matter. Because my reward for you, for your sacrifice, for your obedience is much greater than what the people on the outside is trying to do because they trying it right now. If I can be honest, they're trying it. But we have to move in faith. Big faith, a supernatural faith, a faith that we never seen before, y'all, because they trying it. And it's a harlot in Revelation 7 and 15, 17 and 15. It speaks of the harlot that sit upon the waters. And the waters are what the multitude of the people, the multitude of different nations in different tongues. This stuff is real. God has set before us his word for us to get in his word and study his word and know his word, y'all. It's time. It's time, y'all. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. What I put the lighthouse, John 3. What that is? John 3 and 19 through 21. Oh, this is when... Okay, John 3 and 19, 21. I'm reading it from NIV. It says, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. The, the enemy is being exposed. Satan is being exposed. Everybody who works for Satan is being exposed right now. This is what's happening. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be plainly so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So in the dream I mentioned in the lighthouse, when everybody came into the lighthouse, they were happy and merry. They were drinking. They were mixing and mingling. They weren't like getting drunk, but they were like they had their like glasses like on the tables like I didn't physically see nobody turning up cups and drinking but it was like glasses on the table but more so people were just enjoying each other's company they were in good conversation their hearts were merry you could see the light on their faces you could see the well-lit room like you can just see the beauty and the glory in this lighthouse right and 
God is saying, but whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. Like these people actually came in the lighthouse. When I was first in there, it, was, it wasn't no people in there. Then all of a sudden, people just appeared. God is saying he is, people is coming to him. And those people we have to handle with care. We have to handle each other with care. That's what God is saying. God is saying all that, y'all. God loves us. God is ready for us to come to him. And in Matthew and 5, it talks about the better tools, right? And then in verse 14 through 16, it says, You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. In the dream again, I, I was talking about the lighthouse. How the lighthouse set, it was so tall. It was like the tallest building I've ever seen in my entire life before. It was so tall. It couldn't be hidden. And everybody that came into that building were lit up. But that building represented the Lord Jesus Christ. The actual building represented the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody that went inside that building got light, received light, and was light, and became light. A reflection of God. This is so real. Verse 15, it says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. So let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I just talked about good works in 1 Corinthians 3 and 13 through 15, I believe. It all it all ties together like God's word all ties together. It all ties together. It all ties together, y'all. It, it, it all ties together. <laughs> I'm laughing because God is so good. Like, God is so good. God is a God of mercy. In John 8 and 12, it says, Then Jesus spoke again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So, y'all, it's time for us to follow God. It's time for us to follow God. In Psalms 27 and 1, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And that's the last scripture I'm going to read. And basically, God is saying that he is our light and our salvation. When you know light, you know salvation. You know the Lord. And when we're walking in light and when we've been saved and redeemed by the Lord God, we are to not walk in fear of what the enemy going to try to do to us because we accepted God. Because he's going to come and try us. He is. But we know that God is on our side. So if God is our light and our salvation, whom shall we fear? Whom shall we be afraid? Nobody. And we have to believe that. It's going to be times where things get scary. I'm telling you. For myself. I'm telling you. As a witness. But we got to stand on the word of God. And we got to walk by faith. And know. That what God said. We just got to believe it. When we believe it. The more we believe God. The bigger God becomes in our lives. The more we believe God, the bigger God becomes in our lives. In Jesus' name. Right? So, when I was studying, God called me to write out a lot of things. God is judging the land of adulterers. He's judging the godless society. Um, the position, the stance, the... Reaction in the action is to turn from wickedness. He's even judging the church. He's judging us. He's judging the house of God. We have to go through judgment first. God said the house of God is first judged. So, no, I'm not saying we are wicked and we are adulterous, but we got to go through judgment first. And God said, while, you know, we're being judged because we're going to repent and turn because we are children of God. And that's what we do, right? We repent and turn. Okay. But God said he's judging the land of adulterers. He's judging the godly society um, that they would turn from wickedness. He's judging the prophets and the priests and the shepherds, the accomplices that goes along with the false prophets, the false priests, the false shepherds um, and corruption and misleading the people. 
um, the darkness and wickedness was the storm that of the earth, the atmosphere, the clouds, the water, all of that. Um, the worldly system is a system of doctrines of love and universalism, which really is demonic doctrine, divination, and witchcraft. The worldly system is what, y'all? The government and everything that rules under the government. What 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 rules under the government? Social social and religious chaos, social and religious statuses. First of all, Christianity, they is not a religion. They made it a religion. Christianity is, is a belief. It's not a religion. It's something that we know that's real. But God is judging these things. He is judging all of these things. All of these things are abominations and witchcraft and divination and sorcery. <laughs> Social religious chaos, spiritual adultery, darkness ruling all systems of the world that's molded into one, one nation, which is the worldly system, which is the beast. There are different kingdoms that's in the earth. I didn't write all of them down, but I just wanted to give you guys a generalized idea. You know what God has given me that I, he wanted me to point out because it's a lot of people blind. And it's a lot of people saying they don't believe in conspiracy theories. Well, guess what? They're not conspiracy theories. They're real. OK, and God is saying the economy, the agriculture system, the um, technology system, the healthcare system, the educational system, the entertainment. We see that right before our eyes. The foreign policy, the um, housing um, policy, finance, the political set. He's saying that all of these systems in one way or another are promoting free will. These different religions, these different nations that represents the, these different things and these different sis, systems that's operating under the beast that's being led by the harlot that sits among the waters, right? He's saying that they have tainted these things and they have made them worldly. They have made them wicked. They, have, they are abominations in the sight of God. And it's time for us to turn from our ways. Um... I want to read as I close out in prayer. The prayer is just going to be me reading um, the Lord's prayer because we need to know God's will for our life and not our will. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And it is so. So. I just pray that you guys receive this word and that you take it for what it is, which is the word of God, true word of God, nothing taken away from it, nothing added. I gave you guys what the Lord gave me. This was concerning a dream. He had me to back it up in his scripture and I don't know everything. I only know in part what the Lord gives me and that's just on God. That's on the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And <clears throat> I thank you. I thank you guys for supporting me. I, I pray that you guys, you know, continue to seek the Lord for whatever it is. Continue to be obedient. Continue to obey. Continue to press, y'all. And believe God. Believe God for the promise. Because the promise is coming. Don't be easily persuaded. Don't be distracted. Don't be deceived. Repent and turn. I love you all. Have a blessed night. Happy New Year's.